ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فنتحدث اليوم عن سوره ملئت بالاحكام والتعاليم الشرعيه هي سوره مدنيه احتوت على ايات حق للمسلمين ان يشكروا الله تعالى عليها انها سوره المائده نتحدث اليوم عن بعض الايات التي ذكرها الله سبحانه وتعالى في بدايه هذه السوره ابتدات هذه السوره بامر عظيم يبين لنا عظمه هذا الدين الا وهو الوفاء بالعقود سواء في ذلك العقود الفرديه او المواثيق الجماعيه يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في اول ايه من هذه السوره يا ايها الذين امنوا اوفوا بالعقود فليس من شيم المسلم ان يخلف وعده او عهده او عقده بل ذلك من شيم اهل النفاق all praise is due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we thank him and we bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we bear witness that prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and the seal of all prophets today's khutbah is to cover some of the beginning verses of surah al-maida that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed for us as muslims and believers to be guided by in order to deal with each other of many ahkam and rulings and general rules that we can apply in our deen as you know the quran came as a constitution and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to put in it general rules that you apply in many other things that we deal with in order for us to know what's halal and what's haram and one of the greatest thing that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts this surah with the very first verse with the very first verse by saying o oh believers now this is something a call that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing us especially us those who have submitted to allah those who have claimed that we are muslims we are believers we believe in allah we believe in a day of judgment we believe in accountability we believe that there will be resurrection we believe that when we die that's not the end of it but rather that's the start of our day of judgment we believe that there will be a moment where we're going to stand in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who do believe have to always account their actions and to put themselves into accountability about what they do and at the very first verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for those who believe for those who have actually submitted fulfill your contracts what contracts as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about every contract a believer gets involved in. Every contract. Your big contract of marriage contract when we come together as a husband and wife and we promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're coming as two strangers to become halal to each other and we promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are going to deal with each other in accordance to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the guidelines of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through the traditions and customs of our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we sign the contract what do we do in that marriage we need to fulfill and if we don't then 
we are committing a sin because we're going against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do to fulfill our contracts. When we become as partners and we promise each other that we're going to treat each other fairly, when we go and apply for anything and we fill out any application, as a Muslim, as a believer, you are signing to say, I am a Muslim, I'm truthful, I will abide by what I'm signing. But to sign something and to go against it and to try to do things that are considered to be wrongdoings and you know that it's wrongdoings and you know that we are not doing the right thing and we are lying and we're not fulfilling our promises but we're doing it anyway. Then we're going against the very first verse of this surah. That's contracts and you can apply this in every aspect of your life. At work, at home, at school, on campus, off campus, at the masjid, anywhere you go, your verbal promise is a contract. And when you tell someone that I will do it, inshallah, it means that you just signed a contract even if you don't sign anything. Because as a believer, whatever you say, you're abide to be abided by and to be abide by what you say to others and what you promise you need to fulfill. And if you can't for some reason or another, then you need to come back and tell people that I can't do it anymore. I really cannot do it anymore. I promised you to do this, but I have declared my failure and I can't do it. I need a way out and we need to work together. And instead of avoiding people and running away from them and shying away from them, and cutting relationship with them. And when they call, we don't answer their calls. And when they come close to us, we run away from it. That's not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see from us. وفي هذه السورة أيضا وضعت قوانين وقواعد التعاون بين المسلمين فقال سبحانه وتعالى وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى ولا تعاونوا على الإثم والعدوان في الآية الثانية من هذه السورة. فحري بمن يطيع أوامر الله أن يعين المسلمين على الخير وأن يحجب عنهم الشر. Second verse that comes right after Allah سبحانه وتعالى says وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى. Help each other, cooperate together, come together in anything that is considered to be good, in goodness, something that is beneficial to society, something that does nothing but benefits others. And it is labeled to be good. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you the general rule is that you cooperate in it. You become a very active person when you involve in such project or in any aspect of life that reflects nothing but goodness. And the opposite is true because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly says, وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ And do not get involved. Do not endorse. Do not promote anything. Any project, any act, any saying, any statement that leads to wrongdoing, that leads to something that everybody knows that it is not good, but rather it's harmful. That's a general rule. And instead of you asking, can I get involved in this? I have an offer. I have a job. I have something. Can I do this? Can I not do this? These are general rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you. And you can always apply it in your life. Am I doing something khair or not? Whatever I'm doing, is it benefiting others or is it harming others? If it's harming others, then it's haram. If it's benefiting others for the khair, then alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the door wide open for you to get involved and to cooperate in that thing. وَإِلَىٰ كُلِّ مَنْ فَتَحَ أَبْوَابَ الشَّرِّ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِينَ مُتَغَافِلًا عَنْ أَحْكَامِ اللَّهِ لا بد له أن يتعظ وأن يخاف الله سبحانه وتعالى القائل في سورة المائدة في الآية الثالثة اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا في هذه الآية أيها الإخوة والأخوات يبين الله سبحانه وتعالى أن الدين كامل لا يجوز لأحد كائنا من كان أن ينقص منه أو يزيد فيه ومن انحرف عنه فقد وقع في الخسران المبين 
in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to address the believers and to tell us, oh, those of you that have believed, I have given you a way of life. I have given you a deen, a way of life that I have perfected for you, that I have done it so perfect for you that I blessed you and I showered my blessings upon you by choosing you to be among those who committed for this deen. So in return, accept it in totality. Do not accept a part of it and then shy away from another part. And by all means, do not ever come close to make yourself partner with me in legislations. When I say something is halal, then it is only Allah that makes it halal. When I say something that is haram, then it's only Allah that makes it haram. Don't get into the domain of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and start changing the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made certain things allowed and permissible, then we have no room but to follow and say they are allowed and permissible. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made certain things haram and impermissible and they're not permissible to us, then we have no room to come and twist the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to say, no, that's not what it meant. This is what we are living in a different era. We are in the 21st centuries. We have to have a total reform of Quran and fiqh and we have to have, who are you to say this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended and revealed this Quran and this deen on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Sahaba and the companions, the followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received it. They understood it. They passed it on to the next generations and to the following generations and to the following generations. And from these people, the deen was established and was written. And this is a complete perfect science that is preserved in books, that it has ways and formulas in order for you to extract rulings. So it does not leave any room for anyone to just come in all of a sudden and open the Quran and understand it his own way or her own way and to go in public and run conferences that are recorded, that's going to go all over the globe. And then when you address now and telling, and you address that person and you tell him, on what basis do you rule the halal haram and the haram halal? And when they're stuck and they can't answer anything, they said, well, this was my own understanding. But we, we, you cannot have this own understanding and you publicly spread it now, how, how are you going to be able to retract it and to get away from it? You can't because it's spread all over the globe. How are you going to go and knock on every door now that has downloaded your video or your saying and say, by the way, when I did this, when I made my own ishtihad and my own judgment, I was wrong. It can't. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, don't get into this and refer it back to the right reference to the people of knowledge. And that is applied on all of us, by the way. It's not just the big scholars, but rather us in our gatherings. When we throw and we say something halal and haram, and I don't think this is halal, I don't think this is haram, I don't think and I don't think, and again, we're not realizing that we are getting in a domain that does not belong to us. It's a domain that is exclusively, exclusively to only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can do the legislations of halal and haram and the allowance of what is allowed and what's not allowed. And we understand it through scholars of that deen who have dedicated their life for this. And it's not for any ordinary person to sit on his couch and to start reading a book and say, this is what I think and this is what I not think and what have you. ثم تنتقل الآيات إلى أمر آخر يبين الله سبحانه وتعالى رحم يبين رحمة الله بهذه الأمة وهو أن كل الطيبات حلال إلا ما دل الدليل على حرمته فيقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في الآية الرابعة 
يسألونك ماذا أحل لهم قل أحل لكم الطيبات إذا كل طيب فهو حلال وكل خبيث فهو حرام ويقول الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وهذه قاعدة عامة أيها الإخوة والأخوات تطبقونها في حياتكم على كل أمر تمرون فيه هل هو حلال أم هو حرام يقول الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله إذا حرم على قوم أكل شيء حرم عليهم ثمنه كل شيء محرم علينا أكله فهو حرام بيعه والتعامل به Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this surah, in fourth verse, what could be translated as, and something that is so great that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us general rule, again, a general rule that we apply in our life. One of the greatest things ever, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, I have made the tayyibat halal for you. Everything that is good, everything that is tayyib, pure whether you consume it or whether it's a project you get involved in it as long as it's great and it's good then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed it you don't even have to ask is it halal or not because it's known and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you the general rule that because it's khair and it's good it's halal and that's the general rule that everything is halal except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says otherwise now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made everything tayyib halal for us. Now, the opposite is true. Anything that is khabith, anything that is filthy, anything that is gross, anything that does nothing but allows shar and wrongdoing in society, anything that spreads, you know, shar and wrongdoing in society, whether you consume it, you eat it, you drink it, it's a project, you get involved in it, it's an item and a merchandise you invent. If it's going to be used for something khair, then it's halal. If it's going to be used for something shar and wrong, and it would do nothing but bring misery upon people, then it's haram. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also gave us a very general rule about the income that we receive and things that we get involved in it. Is it halal or haram? This kind of job, this kind of project, this kind of you know, software that I get in, this kind of what have you, anything that comes to your mind. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala described eating of things forbidden, in general when you consume things to eat or drink for people. So if Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala made something haram to consume, you can't drink it, you can't eat it, in general it's haram. He declares its price also forbidden for them. So that's the general rule. And instead of me going through a list of telling you this and 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 this, all of this we are not allowed to consume and it's haram. So in return, it is not allowed for you to deal with. It's not allowed for you to sell and buy. That's a general rule. Anything that is haram on you, you cannot consume, then you cannot be part of dealing with it and selling it, buying it, and getting an income out of it. General rule that Allah SWT puts for you so you can apply it in any product, in any consumption that you go through in your life. We ask Allah SWT to guide us to the best of speech and follow it, Allahumma ameen, and to make us among the believers who listen to the best of speech, inshaAllah ta'ala, and be guided with it. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu fa ya fawza al-mustaghfirin. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-mursaleen. Nabi al-huda Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tasliman kathira. إن العدل فضيلة عظيمة أيها الإخوة والأخوات به تقوم الأمم وتحيا الشعوب وتزدهر الحضارات وقد حث الله سبحانه وتعالى عليه بل حث عليه حتى مع المخالف فقال سبحانه وتعالى في الآية الثامنة من سورة المائدة ولا يجرمنكم شنآن قوم على ألا تعدلوا اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى 
العدل في كل الأحوال من المنجيات أيها الإخوة والأخوات قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاث منجيات العدل في الرضا والغضب والقصد في الغنى والفاقة ومخافة الله في السر والعلانية One of the greatest things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also give us as a general rule and guidance in our life is in verse 8 of Surah Al-Ma'idah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says do not allow yourself to transgress against someone or to oppress someone or to wrong someone even if that someone happens to be your enemy so look at, at, at the greatest the greatness of this deen Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is demanding his followers, his servants, people that follow this deen and his deen. Despite your hatred to someone, despite your enmity toward someone, you despite the wrongdoing that others have done against you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, you should not go down to their level. But you should have a standard that you can't go below it. And that is the adil and justice and fairness. And you're not allowed to deal with people with injustice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, even if it's against people that have wronged us, people that we have enmity toward, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still says, don't allow yourself, despite the enmity you have toward others, don't ever allow yourself to be unjust and to promote oppression against people just because you had something between you and them and you had a problem with someone and because you had a grudge and you're holding a grudge against someone and somehow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent your way an opportunity for you to revenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying never do this because you're a Muslim and you're a believer and that's what makes you different from others and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us do not allow yourself to do this. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there are three things if you're able to maintain and to carry on as a character, as a believer, then you are saved. And you are among the successful ones on the day of judgment. They're not easy. And that's why Prophet sallallahu is telling us, if you train yourself to promote it within yourself, then inshallah ta'ala, you are going to be among those that Prophet Muhammad promised to be among those who are saved on the day of judgment, insha'Allah. And those three are first, al adlu fi rida wal ghadab, that you are just in rida while you're very comfortable, while you're going through very easy time of your life, you are a just person. And also when you're going through some tough time and you're going through trials, and you're being tempted to do something wrong against someone in order to gain something yourself, you're still just. And you have red lines that you cannot cross. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see in you. وَالْقَصْدُ فِي الْغِنَى وَالْفَاقَةِ And you are content, and you are balanced, and you are fair, whether you are well off, and you have plenty of risk, or whether you are very limited, and you're not really well off, and you're going through a very tough time, you're still content, and you are accepting everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala written for you. And that you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in public, as well as in secret. When no one sees you, when no one knows what you're doing, you still do the exact same thing that you do in public, and you have the same fear because you're dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who knows what you do in public and knows what you do in secret. And you can't hide anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَدْ حَذَّرَتِ الْآيَاتُ فِي هَذِهِ السُّورَةِ مِنْ عَاقِبَةِ الْكُفْرِ وَالْإِنْحِرَافِ عَنْ طَرِيقِ اللَّهِ فَقَالَ جَلَّ شَأْنُهُ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ أَنَّ لَهُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا وَمِثْلَهُ مَعَهُ لِيَفْتَدُوا بِهِ مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَا تُقُبِّلَ مِنْهُمْ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ هذه في سورة المائدة الآية السادسة والثلاثون فلن تغني عنهم الأموال ولا العقارات ولا الدور ولا القصور 
لا يكون همهم إلا شيئا واحدا هو الخروج من النار والتحلل من مظالم العباد يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في الحديث القدسي يا عبادي إني حرمت الظلم على نفسي وجعلته بينكم محرما فلا تظالموا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also give us a general guidelines in verse 36 of Surah Al-Ma'idah also. And says what could be translated as, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ أَنَّ لَهُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا وَمِثْلَهُ مَعَهُ لِيَفْتَدُوا بِهِ If a person would own the treasure of earth, anything that you can think of, you are basically, you own earth by itself. Everything in it, on top of it, inside it, everything that you can relate to it, you own it. And if you double this, and if you bring many more on the day of judgment, you are ready to give it up as a ransom in order to get away from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is, you know, something metaphoric, something you don't even own, but you're ready to give it up. Why? Because now you see reality on the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't want to even be delayed from entering Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, if you are ready to do this, if you're ready to give up all this, so you do not, you do not commit any kind of kufr, whether it's the major kufr or what's, whether it's a minor kufr. And that is when you go against something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you not to do and you insist on doing it and you keep doing it and you don't retract from it and you don't stop. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, on the day of judgment, you're willing to give up everything. Even if I give you the ownership of earth and double it and triple it and many more, you're ready to give it up. Why? Because you know that this day, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is way more than anything. If that's the case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, all I need from you before you die is to reconcile. Just fix the problems that you have with others. Stop following your whims and desires. Stop allowing your ego to control you, but rather you do the opposite. You control your whims and desires. You control your egos. You stand up for what's right. If I am in a part of dealing with others, if my friend, if my father, if my mother, if my spouse, if my children, if anybody that is loved and dear to me is doing something wrong, I have to stand up and say it's wrong. But I have to stand up not just to destroy them and to kill them, but rather extend my hand to help them to stop the wrongdoing. And we have to do the same thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I don't need you to give up everything you want. All I need from you is to submit and to admit that you're wrong. And that is a lesson for us to stand really truly and to say, am I causing any oppression, wrongdoing to others? That's all you need to ask you. Could it be possible that I'm always right and shaitan is always whispering in my mind, I didn't do anything wrong. He's the one that did wrong against me. He's the one that wronged me. He's the one that did this. Can I stand up one day and actually ask, could it be possible that I am wrong? Could it be possible my personality is different? Could it be possible that I don't have to expect from people to change themselves, but let me change myself? Because this I have control of. Maybe it is me. Maybe it is something I'm doing that's causing everything happening to me that way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to come clean on the day of judgment. And I don't need to give up everything that I own, but rather all I need to do is to submit and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And even if you were to be right and you are to be showed that you're right on the day of judgment, alhamdulillah, you did it good anyway in dunya. And you win it in dunya and you win it in akhirah. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us not to cause any oppression against others, whether it's major or minor. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he forbid you know, injustice upon himself and made it forbidden among us. So let's not get in any part of oppression against others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and to make us among the believers and to make us to those who listen to the best of speech and follow it. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma aghfir lana wa rahamna wa aafina wa aafu anna. Allahumma taqabbal minna. Allahumma aslih halana. Allahumma aslih halana. Allahumma aslih halana. Allahumma aslih halana ila ahsan hal. Ya Rabbil Alameen, aghfir lana dunubana wa kaffir anna sayyatina. Allahumma aghfir lana dunubana wa kaffir anna sayyatina. Allahumma inna nas'aluka min khayri ma sa'alaka bihi abduka wa nabiyuka Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa na'udhu bika min sharri ma 
استعاذك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اغفر لنا ولأمة الإسلام اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في كل مكان اللهم ارحمنا وارحم موتانا اللهم ارحمنا وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم ارحمنا وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي الله وسلم على نبي الهدى محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقم الصلاة